All right, time to add some life to a puppet by using the physics behavior and dangle feature. All right, so one of the biggest challenges for an animator is creating the illusion of life. There's even a book by that name and you should check it out. And oftentimes what makes things feel alive is physics and what is called secondary motion. So right now, our man Rob has earrings that are sort of stuck to his ears as well as his goatee just sort of feels very fixed. So what we're going to do is actually make his earrings dangle and give his goatee a little sway. And we're going to do that right up here. So I'm going to go to rig. And there we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to his base. That's basically his head there. So inside his head, yeah, there's all these little parts. But the cranium, yeah, that object is called base. Okay. Now I realize it's all highlighting here. So if I made, you know, the base independent, you would see all of the objects that are contained in that. But again, this would make it kind of float awkwardly and not be attached, uh, at least not in an organic way. Okay. So I've got the goatee and I've got my earrings, I've got the ears. And what I want to do is let's start with the earring. So to make dangle work within the physics behavior, the first thing I'm going to do is zoom in. All right. And uh, I'm zooming using the pinch, but you could, you know, you could use the magnifying glass or, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. But I'm going to move the anchor point for the left earring to where it would actually attach. And the next thing I'm going to do is bust out the dangle tool. So the dangle tool is down here. And what it allows me to do is basically click where I would imagine the lowest point of that object feeling sort of the most weight. So this is going to serve as sort of an anchor. And then this is going to provide some sort of direction for it to dangle. Okay. And it's that simple. So it's an independent object. Right, so back in Illustrator, it would have a plus next to the name, or I could just put the tag on here. And I've got an anchor point, and I've got a dangle tag. And I can see over in my tags panel here that physics dangle has been applied. Okay, if I go back to record, notice that it now dangles, but it looks a little bit kind of gooey. Okay, so let's change that. Over here in my puppet behaviors, which, by the way, you want to make sure that, you know, if you have Rob's source selected, that's where you'd get the proper behaviors for that particular puppet. Okay. So if I go to my physics behavior for Rob, you could see that I've got gravity, I've got gravity direction, there's even wind, lots of fun things we could do with these. But in addition to that, I have dangle. In dangle, it's telling me that there is one dangle handle. That's the dangle tag we just added. And what I can do is say, hey, I really don't want it to be quite so gooey and sort of rubber-like. So if I crank up the stiffness, you can see that it's getting less sort of dis, I don't know, deformed. Okay. And it still has a little bit of that, that sort of swinging quality. Now, if I crank up things like the gravity, you can see it can, you know, get a little elongated and we could have no gravity. All right. But it gives it just a little bit of life. All right. Now, the challenge is I'm going to do the same thing, let's say, for the goatee. But physics has already been applied with these values. So I might want to have a different set of physics values for the goatee from, let's say, the rest of his head. So let's solve that problem. I'm going to go up to rig and I'm going to go to his goatee, which also has the crown tag applied. And in other words, back in Illustrator, it would have a little plus sign next to it. And again, if it doesn't, you can always add it in the rigging panel here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out here. Uh, you can, you know, use the pan tools and the zoom tools right here. And what I'm going to do here is a little bit different. 
because it's not just sort of one little spot. I need it to attach in multiple places. So I could start by grabbing just the selection tool and I could anchor that spot down, but I really need these to be locked down too. So what I'm gonna do is grab the pin tool and establish a couple more fixed points. And with the pin tool, notice that I get a modifier that says, hey, that's fixed. So this is gonna all be fixed and I'm gonna put dangles down here. So I'll grab the dangle tool and let's put in a few of these. Okay. Now, if I go back to record, it will work, but it's not nearly enough, right? It's really not doing it. So what I wanna do is go back and say for this particular object, the goatee, I need to add a behavior. So I'll select goatee, go down to behaviors, and I need to say that this has its own physics. So down here, I've got physics. And I can tell it for this object, there's a lot of gravity. Maybe it's got, uh, you know, almost no stiffness. And we can readjust this, but it's telling me there are three handles that it's looking at. Let's start with that and just see how we did. Okay, and now you can see that, yep, the earring's dangling in one way, and the beard or the goatee's dangling another way. And again, that would be something that would be very time consuming to have to keyframe, and just gives things a little bit of life.